Open the controller front panel and insert the Link2 Wi-Fi module into the accessory slot. The Link2 should start blinking blue. If it's not blinking blue, it may need to be reset. Simply hold the button down for about 5 seconds until you see a yellow light. And then it should be flashing blue. As indicated by the on-screen prompt, click Add Controller at the bottom left. In this example, we have an ESP ME3 with a Link2 Wi-Fi module installed. On our module, the light is flashing blue, and then it brings up a list of available controllers nearby. At this point, we can choose an alternate name for the controller or just use the default. The app asks for a zip code for optional weather data. We'll enter the zip code and press Next. We need to select a pin for the controller and hit next. At this point, we are ready to connect to a local Wi-Fi network. We are given an on-screen prompt to remind us that the connected devices can only be connected to 2.4 gigahertz routers. Select a network from the list and enter the password and press next. You're then given an option to send yourself a backup controller connection email in case of a lost or damaged mobile device. I will opt not to do that. Your device should now indicate that it's connected to the internet with a green LED. Select Done, and we're up and running. On the controller card, there are four icons. You can select the pencil to edit, the raindrop to initiate manual watering, the email envelope to send an invitation to another user, or select the trash can icon to delete the controller. Tap anywhere on the controller card to access the controller. The box near the top left indicates that there are no more irrigation events scheduled today, but we know that the controller is in auto, otherwise it would tell us here that it's off. To the right of that would show today's weather forecast. On midnight after the first day of installation, upcoming weather data will appear here. Pressing the water use button will show irrigation events that have occurred and will indicate water use if a flow sensor is connected. Next, we have a program card. With the program name, Program A, next run is scheduled for 40 minutes tomorrow with a summary, the pencil icon to edit, the camera icon to import a custom photo for the program if desired, and the trash can to delete the program. If you click the down arrow underneath, it will give a list of zones, how long they're programmed to run, and if they have been adjusted from there. It will also give us an option to manually run the program. Click anywhere on the program card or the pencil to edit the program. At the top, we have the option to give it a custom name or just leave the default name of program A in this case. Next up is watering frequency, how often to run. You have choices of odd calendar days, even calendar days, custom or choosing days of the week, or on a cycle ranging from 1 to 31 days. In this case, we'll use custom and select Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to water. We have two options for seasonal adjustment. You can use the slider bar to manually adjust a percentage to be applied to all zone run times within the program, or toggle on seasonal adjust, which will use the zip code entered during setup and local weather data to automatically adjust percentages at midnight every night. You have the option to enter which soil type is present. Next up is start times. Here we have an 8 a.m. start time. We can hit the X next to the 8 to delete it. Hit the plus to add a start time. Next up are zone run times. Here we can edit the amount of time in hours and minutes that we want each zone to run. The adjusted run time to the right reflects an adjustment that was entered with seasonal adjust earlier. When toggled on, the cycle soak feature allows you to set maximum cycle times and minimum soak times, perhaps for areas in the yard that are sloped or have compact soils. You would select a maximum amount of time you want it to run during the cycle, and then a minimum amount of time that you would want it to soak, not run, before resuming until the total program runtime is complete. Once we're satisfied with the program, we hit done. If you'd like to add additional programs, push the plus program button to do so. Along the bottom of the screen are some advanced features, the first one being zones. We can give custom names to each zone and select whether those zones are actually wired up to the controller or not. Calendar icon, when pressed, will show past and upcoming irrigation events. By selecting a day that has a green dot, the app will tell us which zones are running on that day, which program they're in. The big raindrop icon in the center is for manual watering. The first option being a quick run of all zones in order for a desired amount of time, running an entire program, or custom one-time watering for one or more zones. 
Pressing the green triangle at the bottom will start custom watering. The screen will give you a list of zones scheduled to water and a countdown of how much time is left. Pressing the skip button will advance to the next zone in queue, while the stop button will end the manual watering. The fourth icon across the bottom is to delay watering. This is a selectable amount from zero to 14 days. Hit save to keep the rain delay or cancel to back out. The fifth and final icon across the bottom is for advanced settings. When you press this, it will ask for the pin code. Controller info shows us and allows to edit controller name, zip code, country, pin, current time and date, and tells you the firmware version, gives you the option to update it. The rain sensor can be bypassed or activated from this menu. If your controller supports flow sensing and you have a flow sensor installed, you can edit those settings here. Toggle the flow sensor installed switch to on to access flow settings. At the top, you would select from a list of available Rainbird flow sensors. There's an indication here that flow has not been learned. If you select learn flow, the controller will initiate a program to learn flow for each station. The thresholds for high flow and low flow can be adjusted and then you can make a choice what the controller should do in a high flow or low flow state. Alarm only, skip the problem zone, or skip all zones. Settling time can be adjusted depending on the length of the main line. Select network settings to view current settings and or change. Network info provides information about the network. Under notifications, you can select which events you want to be notified about through push notifications on the Rainbird app. These can be toggled on or off. The last setting is for connected home. Toggling the switches on, you'll be able to integrate with Alarm.com, Amazon Alexa, and Google Home. Simple, fast, it's that easy to use the Rainbird app.